Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We've got Matt Crow sitting in for Dave. I want to remind people that we don't want people to hear your voice and be like, what happened to Dave? But uh, we've got uh, Congressman Arrington on line one. We want to jump over to Congressman Arrington. Uh, Congressman, how are you this morning? Uh, I'm doing well, but now I've got Matt and Matt, and so I'm going to have to say Crow. So I'm his, Crow. I'm his evil twin, Congressman. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other Matt. <laughs> Crow, From California, good. To you, brother. <laughs> good to, that was uh, that was quite an event uh, you had in Midland the other day with the president, and I I uh, saw some of the photographs you uh, tweeted out. Um, one of them was over the oil patch that was kind of cool off the wing of Air Force One. Yeah, it it doesn't uh, get any sweeter than being with President Trump on Air Force One flying over God's country and looking at the largest oil patch in the world. And and having a huge, as the president would say, uh, warm West Texas welcome uh, for a man that's uh, done a lot to fight for ag and energy and the forgotten man in rural America. And, and uh, I can tell you, he was well received, obviously, um, and the events went well. But uh, I think he was very encouraged. I can uh, having talked to him quite a bit on the flight back. I think it was a big shot in the arm, and, and at just the right time, I, I might say. So, so uh, are there any things that you can talk about that y'all talked about that's important to uh, to what's going on right now? Well, I think the the thing that I mentioned to him and and that I emphasized in the coronavirus legislation that's being uh, debated uh, is that the single most important thing we can do is incentivize reopening the economy and getting people back to work, which means also getting kids back to school, which, which, which means you can't pay people more on unemployment than in their previous jobs. And that, that unemployment insurance is the single biggest barrier. And, and, and I would add that that's, you know, getting this economy in a strong recovery mode is also, I think, the biggest factor in his reelection prospects. So, so the UI unemployment insurance has to be dealt with, and, and not uh, not by reducing it by a couple of hundred dollars. That will only mean that that you know seventy percent uh, of uh, of the of the seventy five percent of people who are on unemployment will be paid more than their previous jobs. We can't disincentivize work. And cut our nose off to spot our face. That was a big conversation for us. So, um, how is that negotiation going? I mean, right now it's not looking looking very good. Well, I mean, if you look at the Democrats' partisan Heroes Act, um, they just, of course, that's their wish list, and it only sets us back when we can't sit down. And I mean, there's some things that you should expect will be partisan. But when you're doing, uh, you know, emergency disaster relief in an unprecedented public health and economic crisis, you would hope we could sit down and work through some of this. But their starting point is just is awful. It's a bailout for cities that aren't, you know, haven't been doing their job and have had poor fiscal management. Uh, they want to extend un- this unemployment insurance $600 plus up per week. Uh, through the first quarter of next year. That, 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 and, and listen, we need to help people who are struggling. And, and it, we can debate how to do it uh, w- with respect to cash assistance um, and target those in greatest need. We can talk about payroll tax holidays and other tax incentives and breaks for companies and their employees. But, but what we can't do is allow our economy to just stagnate on account of that ridiculous policy. And so that that's really, to me, on for the Republicans especially, that's going to be the toughest issue to overcome because the Democrats are digging their heels in. But I would submit to you, uh, it's in the Democrats' favor when they keep people sidelined and not at work. And I know a lot of folks who need a lot of labor and it's government policies that are keeping them from, from being able to hire folks. Yeah, even in Lubbock, uh, even though the unemployment rate it seems kind of high. Um, it's it's low for the nation right now, but it seems kind of high for Lubbock. Uh, there are j- plenty of jobs available. They just can't hire anybody to you know wait tables or or do fast food right now. 
And the, the other thing, guys, is that there's a major lawsuit, sort of class action type lawsuit that is beginning to move and work its way across the country. You've probably read about Walmart and Tyson's Food and some of the big corporations, but it will be everybody. It will be hospitals exactly, and mom-and-pop shops, and they'll be sued uh, uh, for doing something, you know, for not having the right protocols or the controls. And, and so these, these, the, the threat of this widespread litigation from plaintiff's attorneys is another major cloud and drag on our economic recovery. Well, uh, there, and let me just let, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say it's it's going to re- it'll recover a little bit, and then all these lawsuits will hit, and then all of these companies will go out of business. All the small that's companies it. that can't deal with that. So that's it. So I mean, it, it, to me, there we have billions, tens of billions. In fact, 150 billion was set aside, allocated, appropriated, if you will, for cities and states. Only 25 percent of that has been spent. Uh, schools is another topic of conversation for uh, mainly on the Democrat side, because the reason is we've already appropriated 13 billion. Well, guess how much of that has been spent to date? A whopping one percent. What I would do is take the remaining monies, the 99 percent that haven't been spent, and I would reward those schools that are opening for in-classroom education for the children because. That's where they need to be. It's best for them. It's best for the parents. It's best for our country. Uh, we need to incentivize the right behavior here, here and uh, there's not a lot of margin for error. Okay. Congressman, we have do have to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back. This is Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. Sitting in with me is Matt Crow, and we have uh, Congressman Arrington on the phone. We'll be right back on 90, News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We got Matt Crow sitting in with me, and we got Congressman Arrington on the phone. So we want to go right back to there, Congressman. Uh, the um, the president uh, and and you've gotten to know him pretty well. Tweeted out the other day or made mention of the fact that uh, you know that we need to be real careful about mail in ballots, and talked a little bit about you know perhaps that would be a reason for delaying an election didn't say he was going to do anything about it but just mentioned the fact that we've got to be really careful with mail-in ballots for good reason do you just want to knock your head against the wall when the the national media and schumer and pelosi make you know a, a huge deal out of something that he says off the top of his head i mean no, no most of the time he's being sarcastic and he's he's trying to make a joke or is making a joke, and they just take it and run with it. I, ju- I just shake my head, and you've got to have the same feeling. I mean, I bet most of the people on the airplane going home have the same feeling. <laughs> well, he keeps me busy with uh, all this <laughs> tweet, I will say that. Um, and, yeah, they they love to, you know, parse and uh, fly spec any and every move he makes. That's the nature of where we are, and you know that they're – agenda has consisted of obstructing and uh, dismissing and disrespecting him. Uh, quite frankly, it's the office itself will never be the same as a result of the, the, the impeachment proceedings and other baseless investigations that uh, have gone on forever to the detriment of our being able to govern our great country. But that's, that's where we are. He, he's a fighter. He's a tough guy. Um, I, I think he's right, though, on on, on uh, massive mail-in uh, uh, voting uh, ballots, I think there's a reason for people to have absentee ballot opportunities when they're not physically able. Uh, but the system is not ready. The infrastructure is not there. Look at look at New York. They had a primary close out a month or so ago, and because of the massive mail-in ballots, they're still trying to figure out who won. And you know, I think. That's going to be a very questionable race going forward because of the lack of controls, et cetera. So, you know, we're in a unique time with this pandemic. Certainly, if you're an, a, a vulnerable part of a vulnerable population, there's some exceptions. But, but on the whole, if you can get in a in a big gigantic tube uh, that's circulating air around, you know, a closed ventilation system, and you know, like flying like I do back and forth then uh, you certainly can put on a mask if you'd like. You could put on a hazmat suit if you'd like, if you feel. But we've got to get people to the ballot box because 
that's the only sure way to to make sure that the integrity of our the cornerstone of elections in our democracy uh, persists. And uh, so that's that's sort of my. It's a state issue, though. Remember, HR one, which is the uh, the premier legislation for any party. Uh, for the Democrats in the House was federalizing elections. And they would like to take over elections and run it like they run California with massive mail-in, ballot harvesting, et cetera. It's, it's, it's racketeering, and it would destroy the integrity of our elections. You've got a uh, – I think you're voting on some appropes uh, packages today. Anything in those appropriations we should – know about? Is it appropriation specific to one area, or is it a cross-the-board type of... These are combinations. There are many buses that have approps from different agencies, and it's a, it's purely partisan, Matt. It's not uh, anything to take seriously, because there are all sorts of poison pills, whether it's issues related to border security, things that they're doing to poke at the president, tying his hands. Uh, they've taken out pro-life measures like the Hyde Amendment. So it, this is like uh, most of what has happened over the last two years. Again, obstruction, uh, partisanship, very little governing, and this is just another example. We're going to take a quick break here on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. Uh, Congressman Arrington, uh, uh, thanks for we, we'll see you just in a second sorry we got congressman yeah. errington on the line uh matt crow sitting in for dave king we'll be right back welcome back to mornings with dave king and matt martin we got matt crow sitting in with me and congressman errington on line one congressman i i do have a quick question i know we're going to run out of time here uh but uh bernie sanders is the newest uh senator to come out and ask that the filibuster rule there in the senate get get uh I guess they get rid of it uh, if the Democrats are able to uh, win the Senate. And Schumer seems to be uh, essentially said that all things are on the table when he was asked about it. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, they're they're getting uh, awfully cocky. Uh, they see the president having a bit of a of a dip um, here lately, and they are starting to line up. Uh, the situation for them to sort of run the table without the control of the filibuster. It's a, Matt knows it's a thorn in the side when you have the majority, uh, but when you're in the minority, it can save you from some really bad things. And uh, if they ever removed it and got the House and Senate um, and, and, and the presidency, they would, uh, every imaginable po- socialist policy would be rammed through taking over elections, taking over health care. Uh, Green New Deal? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Green New Deal, and that the president was contrasting that with freedom-loving West Texans versus socialism and government control of every facet of our lives and the energy independence that has blessed our nation economically and from a national security perspective. And they want to ban fracking, airplanes, cows, it's a disaster. It's ninety trillion dollars. We've never collected that kind of tax revenue from the since the inception of the nation. So it's, yeah. it's horrible. But that horrible scenario could be reality if people don't, uh, you know, don't go up, Can show vote. up to the ballot box. Yeah. All right, Congressman. We got about thirty seconds. Is there anything else you want to say before we go to? Uh... Yeah, I want to say how proud I am. Uh, to the hard work and freedom loving God fear in West Texans who uh, welcomed our president. They they made me very proud and they made him very encouraged. So God bless West Texas. All right. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, we'll be back on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO after this break. <laughs> 